I love to travel. One of the central locations in my newest book, Deep Plant, is New York City. Known the world over as the Big Apple, it is an extraordinary collision of sight, sound, smell, taste, vibrations. What struck me about New York was how close all the major landmarks that we see in the movies and TV are to each other. Central Park, Times Square, Empire State Building, Wall Street, Broadway, Grand Central Station, Tiffany's, Waldorf Astoria Hotel, I could go on. They're all within blocks of each other. New York City is comprised of five administrative districts known as the boroughs. They are Staten Island, Brooklyn, Queens, Bronx, and Manhattan Island. There is a vast array of things to see or do in the greater New York area, but for today, let's focus on Manhattan. Manhattan is the most densely populated of the five boroughs and serves as the center of New York City's self-identity. When people speak of New York, they often are referring to Manhattan. An island, it's bounded by the Harlem River to the north, in the east by the appropriately named East River, on the west by the Hudson River, and to the south, the upper Hudson Bay. Manhattan is the home to many amazing and impactful organizations and buildings. You often hear of New Yorkers refer to uptown and downtown. Downtown is famous for Wall Street and Battery Park, while uptown is home to things like Columbia University on the Upper West Side. But for today, I want to touch mostly on Midtown Manhattan. According to Wikipedia, it is this country's largest commercial, entertainment, and media center, as well as the home to some of the most expensive real estate on the planet. On Fifth Avenue alone, rents can be as high as $3,000 a square foot. It is also home to two of America's four major TV networks, CBS and NBC. While the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade starts up by Central Park, it winds through and finishes at Macy's Midtown flagship store. Midtown is the nexus of New York. What are some of the cool things to do there? Well, what do you like? Loud, vibrant, crowds? Times Square is off the hook. Be the star of your own movie here where the world celebrates New Year's with the dropping of the ball at midnight. Neon lights, the lifeblood of one of the world's most recognizable locations, pulse all around you with energy. Hard to take a bad picture anywhere in the square. Experts suggest taking selfies on the steps right atop the TKTTS tickets booth facing south, which offer an unparalleled view of the square. Have you ever wanted to visit the winter ice skating rink you see in the movies or on TV? From Times Square, you are a very short walk, less than half a mile, to Rockefeller Center. On the way, you'll pass Hershey's Chocolate World, the Nintendo Store, NBC Studio A, where they filmed the Today Show, and FAO Schwartz Toy Store, made famous in the movie Big. In the wintertime, ice skating. In the summer, outdoor bistros and dining. And of course, in either season, you can find Starbucks. The best place to take a selfie here is at the end of Channel Garden, on the steps overlooking the skating rink below. An interesting bit of trivia, Rockefeller Center is in many ways the epicenter of Midtown Manhattan. It was the vision of John D. Rockefeller Jr., son of John D. Rockefeller, the oil magnate, who founded today what is called Exxon. Construction of the center commenced in 1931 with the majority of the complex finished by 1939. It is home to many of America's most recognizable establishments, Radio City Music Hall, home of the world-famous Rockettes. NBC Studios, where you can see live tapings of The Today Show, Saturday Night Live, and The Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon. You could eat or have a drink at the iconic Rainbow Room on the 65th floor, which was used in the movie Sleepless in Seattle with Tom Hanks and Meg Ryan. Other prominent features to be found at Rockefeller Center is the extraordinary artistic influence. The building's design, art, sculpture, statues, and color are massively dominated by Art Deco, an extremely popular style in the early 20th century. 
Two examples of this are the statue of Atlas, holding the world at the eastern side of the Rock Center across the street from St. Patrick's Cathedral. The other is perhaps one of New York's most recognizable landmarks, the famed statue of Prometheus overlooking the ice skating rink. I'll continue my travelogue of Midtown again soon, but for now, these are some of the vast number of highlights that you'll want to see when you visit New York.